the fist or i don't know the frozen fist guide is what we're doing now so the frozen fist is a high health low and we mean when we say low hand size we're saying like the spell weaver low literally an eight which of course means he has some sort of gimmick to mitigate that effect so uh we have a high health pull big beefy fist boy the Frozen Fist is a melee striker, but not like a scoundrel where you skirt about and try to avoid hits. Uh, the Frozen Fist actually has a moderate amount of durability uh, made up by it, the fact that, and we'll get into that, it says constantly regenerating, effectively immune to wound and bane, and has a variety of benefits that increase its self-healing. Ultimately, all this defense comes at the penalty that he doesn't actually have a significant amount of shields and he's going to be constantly damaging himself due to one with the mountain, which we'll keep getting to in shortly. If you want to learn how to play this punchy boy, this is the guide for you. If you want more Frosthaven guides and want to be kept up to date with all things Frosthaven, be sure to subscribe. So as stated earlier, this is a melee striker. The amount of damage you'll be doing to yourself to just keep yourself alive is going to be too much for you to be really considered a tank. But it does have a lot of AoE, it has some hard crowd control, it relies on two elements while also trying to balance its own hand size, so there's a lot to juggle, which can ultimately lead it to be one of the more uh, difficult to play classes. But he does have plenty of self-healing, plenty of status effects, and uh, he actually has good AoE and some reaction, like gaining the ability to make all adjacent enemies suffer damage or retaliate or stuff over this course of a turn so a lot of his cards end up being really cluttered because they do a lot but you have to play, play them effectively to really get the benefit of all those things so let's jump in there so one of the big things and we're gonna go over one with the mountain which is basically a mandatory card potentially uh, not as mandatory later but we'll get into that when we get there one with the mounted is very similar to the spell weavers reviving ether in that you need to bring it just to survive it does have an incredibly beefy bottom half that's incredibly powerful but ultimately due to your eight hand size it's kind of hard to play without it because uh you're gonna have to rest constantly and one with the mountain uh due to the fact that first off has you regenerating all the time and allows you to just redraw your cards that you played back to your hand like the spell weaver the spell weaver has a hand size of eight and this one has a hand size of eight and one card that kind of mitigates that and uh, it's kind of unfortunate because that just means you effectively only have seven cards to work with, which kind of sucks because uh, a lot of classes get a lot of choices and you're just effectively narrowed down to seven, which is not the greatest. But on the other hand, um, there's a lot of things that the cards do and the play style on this can be incredibly rewarding to the point where some people really like it. Uh, shout out to my boy Dwarf to help uh, with this guide and giving permission to where we can have our little combined thoughts. There is a link to the Reddit thread if you actually just want to read through uh, his thoughts on the Frozen Fist. So one with the mountain uh, effectively gives you uh, a stamina that was incredibly rangy because you pick when you want to recover cards so effectively like i, I know I've, i talk about a stamina curve and this one's kind of weird because you're effectively going to be stamina potioning yourself so if you play one with the mountain on the first turn and you on constantly use its effect every turn over the course of a scenario you're actually going to outpace 12 hand size classes but you don't need to actually perform the action every round because it's a lot of damage that you'll be taking from doing that a critical part of this class and a thing that's going to be uh, the deciding factor if you're playing it well or not is choosing when to use one with the mountain so you're not going to do it every turn simply put it's just unsustainable you're going to be taking too much damage uh however uh, there will be turns where you're going to be able to know you're going to be able to regenerate the next round and you're positioned well or whatnot that you can decide, hey, I can get this card back or like you're only two cards left in your hand. So if you recover one, you're not going to be in a position to even play anything. So you just let both of those bounce to your discard and rest, so on and so forth. But the idea of like, hey, I'm at now six cards in hand. If I recover two over this rest, that'll give me up to eight cards played, giving me another round. And then picking which two cards to recover and when, because you'll have three turns. So that gives you one blank turn to not recover a card. And then you play your remaining two cards and then go into a short or long rest. And figuring out how to buy those extra turns is huge. Ultimately, there are a lot of builds that you can do from various classes, but we're going to just stick with a basic build and not with a Preserved Fury build, which is something you can do at level 5. Although you'll see that this class does uh, generate ice and generate earth. It has abilities to interact with terrain such as like ice and hazards, and uh, it, there are plenty of status effects and whatnot that it can do. Uh, 
The status effects are of course important, but for the most part, out of its all of its features, being able to interact with one with the mountain and using your elements is very important. I know that a lot of people uh, normally associate like the range strikers, like the spell casters, like the spell weaver, with you, those classes use the elements and you're a melee guy. No, you need to use the elements for this class to be played effectively, so you have been warned. So let's get into the cards. One with the mountain. Hey, so the, we're just talking about the bottom. Remember when I talked about earlier how uh, Preserved Fury has this build? Heal four self is huge, especially on a level one card. Ward self, all that and infuse the two elements you need is huge. I, it's really hard to use the bottom half of this, not because it's hard to use, actually. It's incredibly easy to use, but only because you can only use the bottom half when you're not using the top half. If you wanted to like, hey, I wanted to use the uh, top card at the bottom I wanted to use. Guess what? One with the Mountain kind of allows you to be able to use both over the course of Rust Cycle, which makes it really cool. It's really essential for play just because uh, if you start early, you'll be able to, first off, delay your first rest, which is actually really important. You trigger this ability twice before your first rest, play five turns, because you'll get two extra pl uh, plays, so you'll be up to effectively a 10 hand size rest. You'll be down to six cards. Uh, that gives you, if you long rested, six turns, and now you're at turn seven with six cards in hand. Now, turn seven with six cards in hand for some classes might be really dire, but keep in mind over the course of that rest cycle, you can trigger one, trigger one with the mountain twice to give yourself four hand plays. At that point, you're now up to round, uh, you're going to be starting round 11 after that, and you're usually winding down closer to the end of the scenario. At that point, you're probably going to be only down to five cards if you didn't have to pitch any. At that point, you can, don't have to use one with the mountain as much if you think you can just make it to the rest of the scenario. But also, keep in mind, you don't necessarily need to use one with the mountain for uh, the purposes of longevity at the end. If you need to get an effect twice, like uh, you played these two cards, but you need to get one back to do it next turn, just do it. As long as provided it's not going to completely screw you up. Here's something to note. All your long rests heal for three, not two, because you always have regenerate. That means means you're immune to wound and immune to bane. Simply put, because there's just no way for them to trigger without regenerate triggering them. Regenerate will still pop off all the other effects like brittle, bane, and wound uh, in addition to poison, but it'll remove them all. Also, if you do suffer uh, damage in between a brittle and a poison, it will uh, have effect between the, the regenerate ticks, but it does mean that when you start your next turn, all of those abilities are just going to pop off. That adds to your durability in so many ways. Um, just just because uh, you're, I know you're going to be taking a lot of damage, but that's huge because you don't have to worry as much about, you know, wounds. Because some people are like, oh, crap, I need to bring healing to get wounds. It's like just a one to bail themselves out in case like uh, we're fighting an enemy that does have lots of wounds. And some of those do. But the Frozen Fist really hardly ever has to accommodate for that because at least two status effects he's immune to and two he's semi immune to. Um, so the, the card recovery is incredibly, incredibly important to playing this class effectively, but also just take note of what is and what isn't intimidating to your characters. Whereas, uh, if you're fighting a lot of enemies with Brittle, I mean, which could be annoying, it's not as bad for you because you know when you're about to start your turn, the Brittle's just going to fall off and you don't need to worry about it. Something to note about one with the mountain, keep in mind the amount of damage you suffer depends on the level of the card. So sometimes as you get to higher levels, it might be good just to bring a couple of level one cards anyway, so you have just one where you only suffer a couple damage from uh, recovering the cards instead of constantly taking the three plus damage to recover. Uh, at the very least, the difference between some of the level one, the level one and uh, Frozen Fist cards are still pretty solid, so it's not bad to bring a couple just to bail yourself out. Uh, cold Boulder. So the Cold Boulder is the first one, which is, this one does so much. First off, you create one icy terrain hex in an adjacent uh, hex without a feature. Nice. Then every hex next to that that has an enemy into it, attack two on them. It is a melee attack, although plenty of times you'll be, be able to attack these enemies at further than melee range. Then, uh, for the rest of the round, every time you suffer damage from an attack, you perform a heal oneself. This is almost like a shield oneself, but it's actually a lot better. First off, Pierce doesn't screw with this, and secondly, if the uh, person uh, who's attacking you has annoying effects, like Snow Imps that toss Brittle on you, uh, this is just going to be heal oneself, heal oneself. You're going to be knocking off the status effects as they get applied. Hilarious. And lastly, it does infuse Earth, which is something you need. The fact that it does all this at once is so important. And not only that, but because the ice is that way, you can kind of hit enemies from a range. I know it's only attack two, but it's actually not 
that hard to get this in a spot where you can just drop it one place and hit a couple enemies with it. So hit a couple enemies or uh, be able to heal yourself. The top action is really beefy. And the bottom is kind of boring but amazing. I always I always love move force. I try to bring move force on any time I play a class, but this one also has the option to potentially move six if you have ice, which you have plenty of ways to make, make it. Now, a lot of times I prefer to use ice for other purposes, but this one does the job just fine. Froster option, you have three hexes where you perform an attack to, any enemy in the area who survives it you can push to, and then you can elect to create an icy terrain tile in one of the featureless hexes of the attack. Then you infuse ice. Again, a lot of the fist abilities are going to have like a lot of things going on. It is only a couple of attack twos, and then you can potentially create a terrain and infuse ice. But again, that adds up pretty fast. It's a good AOE if you can just get up there, punch them, and potentially because you can push them away, uh, this does make you effectively immune to retaliate for this attack. And unless they're, of course, ranged retaliating, I know some of those annoying flame demons do that. It's a it's an incredibly solid card. And there's actually so many cards of the Frost Fist are just solid. As ice, please forgive me for that one. The bottom's really cool because it uses ice, earth, or both. But ultimately, it's a heal to self, which is great. Or you can heal four if you have earth, or bless yourself if you have ice, and you have both. It's a heal for self with bless. Whew. That's amazing. Of course, you need to have both elements in place, so it's not something you can entirely set up all the time. All right, when you are able to set it up, it is important. Plus, keep in mind, since you are going to be uh, damaging yourself all the time, self-healing is incredibly important. This card is effectively mandatory for most of your uh, early career just because you need that recovery. Fury of the Mountain. So this one's actually really good because it gives you some nice single target damage. So, but it also effectively gives you like a shield. It's an attack two, or potentially an attack four if you have ice. Now, needing an ice to make a melee attack four isn't great, but it does have another effect, and that's why this is so good. An attack four is already solid, but whenever you suffer damage this round, suffer one less. This does a lot, actually. Uh, first off, uh, it's better than a shield one. Uh, this does because it says whenever you suffer damage. So if you accidentally are like walking through a trap, it will reduce the trap damage. If you leave it in play when you're about to trigger one with the mountain, because you can choose to trigger one with the mountain before end of round effects effect. So you can leave this in play and like just recover a level one card, which normally case takes makes you take two damage. But you can use this in play to make only take one damage instead to recover a card. So leave this in play to give yourself a little bit more health. Even if you aren't going to be taking an attacks, you can one with the mountain for less health, and that's huge. The bottom would be better on any other class. Move to Retaliate 1 is pretty decent. It's not amazing, and I think other classes that use it better because they have better ways to set up defense. And even if you do have Earth, um, uh, you're retaliating too, but you just don't want to take a lot of hits to begin with. So trying to maximize the retaliate on this is just hard to use. Luckily, the top half of this is incredible, like I was saying. So we're just gonna we are, we're taking this anyway, just because the top half does has a lot of mileage. In case punch, uh, let's go to the bottom first. It's hard to bitch about this. Initiative 19, great initiative. Jump four. You're just going to be using this basically your whole career, if not just because of the bottom half. The top half is interesting. So it's attack three, potentially an attack four, but only if they're on ice. It's not great, but it does give you ice. But anytime you would suffer damage this round, an adjacent enemy also suffers the damage. This is a little bit better. You don't want to use the combo too often, but the fact that A, the bottom card's good. The top half is a decent melee attack that gives you ice. You're not going to be using that retali that retaliate effect as much, although the fact that it does suffer damage, you can break through shields, although retaliate already does do that. Um, you don't have to actually retaliate to that enemy. You can bounce retaliate over onto other enemies, especially if you accidentally oh, brought that one down to one. You can make me finish them off. There's some situations where that effect will pay off. But again, you don't want to take too many hits anyway. But attack three and infuse an ice is already decent. Jump four is already amazing. It's just a great card. Voice from below. This is just better loot cards in Frosthaven, period. So first off, Loot, just just ignore the rest of it right now. Loot one, infuse earth. You use earth for so many things, including healing, to the point where loot one, infuse earth is already strong. But if you do have earth, you also can potentially do an attack two in addition to doing the loot. So you can, I, I don't like the order as much because I'd want the attack two and then the loot, but hey, you can't have everything. And also any heals targeting you this round gains an additional plus one health. You can, however, set yourself up 
uh, to use a bottom heel in addition to that if you just want to pick up, scoop up a lot of loot, heal yourself to get ready for the next turn. Uh, and remember, looting is very important in Frosthaven. I'm going to repeat this, looting is very important in Frosthaven, despite the fact that all of you are like, oh, well, we're going to build a wall and we're going to prevent our buildings from being attacked. Cool. Uh, they're going to get attacked, they're going to get damaged, and you're going to just have to burn resources to protect Frosthaven. That's a fact. And there's going to be a bad shuffle that's going to result in an auto wreck of one of your buildings regardless. It's just, it's going to happen. And you're going to need to repair damaged buildings. You're going to need to fix wrecked buildings. And then you still need to use the remaining resources to brew potions and stuff. Bring voice pull from below, if only because of the loot. The bottom ability is still pretty decent. Um, the biggest problem is you have to be positioned already to heal all your friends. And... Uh, Frozen Fist is one of those classes where you're going to be potentially worrying about position because you're one of those classes that can't be, oops, I'm out of position. Some classes can bail themselves out. Fist is not so much. So you you might not, and you're going to be kind of trying on the front line, but potentially positioning yourself uh, out of positions where they're not going to be necessarily adjacent to so many friends. So heal to self and all adjacent allies usually just means heal to self. But it does give you earth, so there's turns where you absolutely want to use this. Piercing Pummel. Attack, th uh, attack 3, Pierce 2 is already fine. It's not so great, but it's actually really, really good because there's more. Retaliate 1 is fine. You don't, again, you don't want to take too many hits, but hey, it's nice that it's on there. But with Ice, you're going to attack 3, Pierce 2. Attack 3, Pierce 2. You'll hit the guy behind him too, or be able to attack a guy at range anyway. It's just a strong attack anyway. I love it, especially if you're facing shielded enemies, which are a problem anyway. Just being able to punch through them is great. The bottom is so crazy. First off, it's a loss, so you can't one with the mountain to get out of this bottom half. It is, uh, yeah. The thing is, because Frozen Fist doesn't have the ability to recover losses, and losses are really big, they really, any action that has a loss for the Frozen Fist is huge. So just take a look at this. Jump three, great. Attack five with advantage, built in, fantastic. Then you heal to the amount of damage that you dealt with this ability. Then you get earth. Whew. There's so much packed into that. It does so much. But again, losing a card is so huge for you that instead of like other classes will look at this and go, wow, I would kill for that bottom loss. Yeah, but that's because it is on other classes. If it was on other classes, it would not be this powerful. Like I said, this is actually really strong. So I just really want to... I, I can't overstate how much this can be, but usually save it for the end because you can't afford to burn cards like so early. <laughs> so this may be like really tempting to show off early, but it will really bite you in the butt if you do it too early. If you do it towards the end, you can probably save yourself and it's not going to be... And it will be a huge impact turn, especially with the amount of heal, self-healing it can do. You could potentially bail yourself out and being able to actually use one with the mountain more. And again, here we have another loss action. Every adjacent enemy, every adjacent enemy, attack five and immobilize and get ice and earth. Whew. Uh, so here's the best part about ice blast is that can be huge. That can be one of the best things, but it's a loss. So you need to save it for when you need it most. But then the bottom, anytime I see top loss big actions, I want a decent bottom that's universal and we got it here. Move 4 is already decent. I've already was talking about move 4 was pretty good on another card, but now it's wound 4, and if you have ice, you can wound at a guy. So move 4 and maybe wound a guy, that's already a really good bottom. This is this is how top loss, non-loss bottoms should be designed. Good job. Shard launch. It's a ranged attack. Um, so it does give you ice. Uh, you can target up to two enemies within range 3 and do two damage to them. <sighs> it's, it's decent. Um... I'm not sure I'm like, it's, it's first off, it's solid, but like, I, I don't, I'm not like super impressed by it, but you do need some ranged attacks anyway. And this gives you that option if you need it. And it also gives you ice, which is hard to bitch about. Uh, lastly, the bottom is actually pretty strong because jump three, solid, immobilize an adjacent enemy, and then you do a damage to them. Um, more often than not, you'll see that you can use this immobilize on some of those. It's because you have jump, you can potentially, there's there's several times where you'll find ranged enemies in very annoying positions. So just being able to immobilize them so they can't run away. So now they're going to attack you with disadvantage. They suffer damage and you can jump to them. Uh, this card just has a really good use there on bottom, but the top half is kind of harder to use. It's a decent card, but again, 
Uh, I'm not a big fan of like bringing hands to begin with, so this is a good sideboard card and potentially main board depending on uh, the rest of your party composition. Primal Bellow, it's uh, easy to get. Uh, it's easy to underestimate at first, but it's actually really strong. First off, all adjacent enemies suffer one damage. If there's anything I like about that is breaks their shields, fantastic. Then you create an icy hex within range three. Then you push all enemies within range three one, and you get ice. Uh, here's the funny part. If you put an icy terrain behind a person and push them, you're actually going to push them too. And you can potentially move out of position now. But being able to do one damage and then push them away and get ice, there's actually a pretty solid uh, a bit of things you can do with this. Now, that doesn't mean this is going to be like universally good, but it is strong. And the bottom is also great because heal three self and give you earth. That that's, that's what you want. You need sustain. This is one of those cards where if you got yourself into position already, uh, you can heal yourself and uh, infuse earth and just keep going. Um, now, the Frozen Fist is one of those where I found that I want to move around a bit, but uh, again, uh, that's just a, it's just a solid bottom if you are in the right position. But the top's conditionally useful too, so I like it. Hello Kitty. Freezing Shell. Again, so this is a very interesting card, but one thing Initiative 17 is your fastest. It's not enough to break the Initiative 15 barrier to get past the particularly earliest of some of the annoying cards, but hey, that's fine. So the problem what I don't like about this is it doesn't do necessarily a lot because it's Shield 1 or Shield 2, and it basically says you're going to be immune to uh, Disarm and Muddle for the rest of the round, which is... I mean, that's good, but it doesn't... It, you don't attack that round. So this is like, hey, I'm a tank this round. You're not a tank. Um, try as you might, you're not, so I'm not a big fan of it. The bottom's really good because you can at least move, pull enemies towards you, and then they all suffer a damage, which is great. Uh, but you can pair this at least with some of the other cards that do things to adjacent enemies, retaliate or shield, or prevent damage. Uh, so the bottom's a little bit better. The initiative's good, but um, ultimately I'm just not as big a fan. And it would be really cool if you could use both halves of this card because they pair really well with itself, but since you can't, it ends up being and feeling a little bit hardest to use, making it kind of the most situational and maybe the worst out of the uh, Frozen Fist level one cards. Uh, I want to point out uh, Frozen Fist cards are kind of put into tiers. Since you do take damage equal to half of the card level modified, um, anything that has a certain level, like level one cards are all going to be the same damage, obviously, but level two and level three cards, level four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to balance level two and three cards effectively together. Also keep in mind, there's a pretty big difference between like every time you want to trigger one with a mountain to get a level uh, two or three card back, then we'll get again a level one card because suffering three damage every time you trigger it versus suffering two damage every time you trigger it, trigger it. And this is every time. So trying to recover a level two and three card repeatedly just over the course of the scenario adds up to so much more health taken. So um, not saying don't do it, but just be careful. Draw the bedrock without elements and attack two shield one, which isn't great. Attack two shield two is pretty solid, especially um, allowing yourself to go early and potentially shield two is enough to mitigate the effects. But uh, with the with brittle, you can set up a future turn. So if you can use the earth, it's actually pretty great. If you have the elements, it's a fantastic card. Brittle is brittle is actually great. And over the course of a campaign, we found how amazing Riddle can be. Because unlike monsters, sometimes monsters will be like, hey, I'm going to Riddle you. And you're like, oh, crap. And then they'll like throw an attack two at you. So you're like, oh, OK, so I took four. That's OK. You can be really smart with Riddle, where you're like, I just Riddled that enemy. And people are like, all right, I'm going to do an attack five on it. Boom, 10 damage. And just like, yeah, you, you're, you're smarter than the monsters. So whenever you can afflict Riddle, that's something you can work with. So this card can be good, but you have to you have to use the elements with it. So there's some cards where the elements are like, that's nice. This this is this card is weak as shit without it, but amazing with it. The bottom half of it isn't as good. It sounds amazing. Pull an enemy up up to range four uh, to you or up to three. You can potentially mobilize them if you have earth, and then you have shoot retaliate too, which sounds good. And a lot of tanks would want this, but uh, because you're going to be damaging yourself a lot and it's not a level one card, um, you're probably going to be leaning on the top more just to start brittling enemies, just so you can set up brittle and then punch them. Mm. Crushing crystals. So the top action is kind of funny because there's a lot of cards where you're like, you know, like mana bolts. It's an attack two or with an element, it's an attack three. 
Uh, ultimately, they're, they're both roughly in the same power level. Crushing Crystals is completely different. Without an element, it's actually worse than most level 1 cards. But with an element, it's better. That it's so good. So it's... It, because first off, being able to attack two in a two hex thing, usually at level one, you get to like attack three, attack three if they're right next to each other. But now this is with ice, you disarm them. So being able to do two attack twos on two adjacent hexes is nice. But then if they survive, every survivor gets disarmed is huge, especially if you have two adjacent enemies and disarm them both, taking away two enemy attacks with one action, with one half of an action on a non-lost card that just requires you to have elements. That's really solid. Uh, however, again, you do have to set that up. And this is a little bit more defensive, where it's like draw the bedrock with the brittle it allows you to set up future turns, but also a little defensive because you can give yourself shield. The bottom of Crushing Crystals is pretty solid because if there's anything, I do love empathetic feedback. Uh, see, you have a lot of self heals on the class, but they usually involve like bottoms and then you have to not move for the turn. This gives you a uh, move to heal to, but it can potentially give you more than that. If you have ice, you can put an icy terrain tail in an adjacent hex, but you can skate over that. So if you move over that, that's one move, it'll shoot you forward another, and then you move one more after that. So you can potentially move more, get your little ice skate game going on. So you move two or three, potentially drop an ice and heal two pretty solid. Although both cards are pretty solid picks, I do lean a little bit towards Draw the Bedrock. Personally, I always like to have one card that undercuts Initiative 15, and not only that, but the fact you can set up Brittle with it just makes it a little bit more useful, but both of them are very good picks. Last rating Eruption is fine. See, this is a level 3 card, but the top is without elements, basically, just a level 1 card. But... Uh, with ice, you wound everyone you hit, and with earth, you get another row of three hexes to hit. Uh, at that point in time, by the way, if you have both elements in play, attack three in that cone and wound everything is closer to like lower level losses, but instead there are it's a, a level three non-loss that requires two elements. Still good though, don't get me wrong. Also, the bottom is something you just need. Move three and infuse ice, solid. You need You need ice and you need mobility. Despite that, it's a level 3 card making it hard to regenerate, and it's really hard to pick that card, especially with the middling initiative. I was like, earlier late initiatives, and this card just becomes hard to use. So effectively, the initiative is just garbage, and it feels closer to some of the lower level cards. It's not necessarily a bad card, but I, it's hard to pick it over. For example, Frozen Over. First off, hey, you get uh, up to two ice. And this is the important part. If you consume ice as part of this action, every enemy that's under the ice you create uh, becomes brittle. And that's huge. Remember how I was talking about I love setting up brittle? But now you ward yourself too. So this one gives you ward, which just cuts the next time you take damage in half. By the way, enemies can line up. You can very easily brittle two enemies. But also, initiative 20 is pretty solid. Shield 1 and infuse earth, which is great. But also, if you have earth, it moves 3. But that the cool part about this is, is and, and this is what I love about this card, is you're always going to want to do the move 3 if you can, because it doesn't matter. You're going to get the earth back at the end of the turn. The only time you don't want to use the earth move 3 on bottom is if you want to use the earth for something you want to use on top. So if you're already in position, um, you can use the earth with a top action and you're just going to get it back with the bottom uh, shielding up yourself and then giving earth back. But if you do have earth and you want to use it for here and you have like, for example, are using an ice or something else for the top attack or setting up ice for future turns, you can use the earth to shield one, move three, and then get earth back. I always like those cards. That's always fun. And I just like enjoy the interaction. I do prefer Frozen over here. So, but I'm not saying the other card is trash. I'm just saying I don't like it as much, uh, especially compared to some of the other cards um, that were at level two, which are at the very least comparable since they do cost the same amount of health to one with the mountain them back to your hand. Now, level four and five cards are really good, but I just want to point out we're now getting into suffering four damage to get them back with one with the mountains. So just be warned. Mountain's Fist, attack three or attack five if you consume ice. Now we're getting into some beefier numbers, which is nice. And if you kill the target, you heal three self, which is huge. And then you get earth. Phew. So at, at worst, this is an attack three infuse earth. And that's the worst. If you have ice uh, and you kill the enemy, it's attack five, heal three, infuse earth, which is way too strong for a level four non-loss. But again, it's conditional. So... Of course they're gonna do that but uh, I love that top action so much uh, it, it, it's, it's already good but the, the heal three is not necessary but attack five and get one of the elements you need as long as you prepare this it's good 
The bottom, on the other hand, is something I love. Because move four is fine. I love move fours. And immobilize everything you're next to is super good. So, um, yeah. Uh, give me that. That doesn't mean Packed Solid's bad, because Packed Solid gives you, guess what, guess what, guess what? A non-loss stun, which is something I always love. Um, they're both good. Uh, Packed Solid, if you get Earth, you can attack for stun. Again, that's great. The, the bottom part is not as useful, especially with its initiative. So, bottom half, Shield, Retaliate, and Set Up Earth is good. But it's got initiative 55, so you have to pair it with an early initiative. And you, again, you don't have a lot of those undercut cards. So you'd have to pair this with something like uh, uh, Draw the Bedrock or something like that. So I, I'm not, I don't like the bottom with the initiative that strong, but I do love the top. So I'm not saying don't pick Packed Solid. I'm saying bring it for the top because it's good. Whereas the Mountain Fist, I like both sides of the card. I lean a little bit uh, towards that way, but... It's just hard to bitch about how good non-loss stuns are. Both cards are very good. Level 5 give brings us to one of those strange play altering abilities, which we're going to call Preserved Fury. First off, this card specifically says that you cannot recover this card with one with the mountain. <laughs> Attack 2, weak, but then recover a discarded card. And if you consume any element, recover another discarded card. So the funny part is, you can attack 2, boop, weak, again, weak, 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 weak and then recover one or two discarded cards. That's really good because even if you do have one with a mountain play, it says you can't recover this card with one with a mountain, but you can recover your other card. And that's the funny part. So you can always just go uh, um, do a bottom, then attack two, and then uh, consume an element, recover two cards, then use one with the mountain, recover another, giving you three cards recovered that turn. It's intense. Uh, the bottom, on the other hand, is the same as the top, but no attack two at all. It's just recover a discarded card, consume an element, recover another. Uh, yeah, so as long as you hold still, get two cards. This is huge and incredible for stamina. But again, this is incredible for stamina and not good for... It, it also demands you have, use elements. Because of this, just a heads up, and it requires a slightly different build, you can do some insane stuff with this card. But for the main build, we're just going to lean into Ice Uppercut. I didn't want to discount this card and just not talk about it. So I want to say, this can be a huge card and completely game-changing. But for the main build, let's just go with Ice Uppercut. Let's talk about that now. All right, first off, Initiative 15. Finally, we've got the Undercut here. Uh, uppercut, Undercut. <laughs> Please forgive me. Uh, but it's an Attack 5, which is already okay. But wait, there's more. So um, if they're on Ice, it's Attack 6, Push 2. And if you consume the Ice element as part of it... Uh, they're immobilized. Remember that earlier card, Frozen Over? This is what pairs really well with it. First off, they're already going to be standing in ice, and you, this, the early initiative on this card means you're probably going to be undercutting their initiative. And that means it's going to be an attack six, but you probably brittled them from the turn before, effectively making it, on average, at least 12 damage or greater, which is huge. If you do happen to use the element, it's because you have to actually use ice to get that effect on Frozen Over, and then use ice here on Ice Uppercut. So you may not be able to get both ice on both of those, so you may not immobilize them, but you're probably going to at least be able to uh, put them on ice, uh, brittle them, and then knock them away with an attack that averages at least 12 damage. So uh, there's your single target damage. A lot of elites don't have these giant health pools, so this is one way to just easily clean up uh, lo like low-level elites, or at least make medium elite like medium-level elites take a crap ton of health. And the bottom is so useful too. Move four, and then convert any element into the element of your choice. Just hard to bitch because move four is something you already need, and then being able to convert it to ice or earth. What a great card! So, level six is where health you have to suffer five damage. You can bring these cards, so don't get me wrong, they're great. You will need them because they're powerful effects, but you're probably not going to be recovering them that often. Just heads up. Pick frost, heal three self on the top. Eh, but uh, if you have earth, it's a heal six self, which is solid. 21 initiative is pretty good. But, but also, if you suffer damage this round, suffer one less. This is another one that pairs really well with one with the mountain, because you heal potentially a crap ton. You can potentially reduce your one with the mountain damage taken, as well as any other damage taken, like from enemies or traps or whatnot. But yeah, that's such a significant chunk of your health right there. It's pretty good. And the bottom is actually really strong too, because first off, it's a move to ward self. So with the ward, that does uh, reduce your damage taken. Uh, keep in mind, by the way, 
You can use the move to ward self and then take damage with one with the mountain. Burn the ward to re reduce the damage taken of the one with the mountain by half. And then recover a high level card with that. So if you're like, oh, like especially once you get to like uh, level eight cards where you start, start suffering six damage. If you ward yourself, that actually means you can get level eight or nine cards back by only taking three damage. Which is way better but it also gives you earth in the process so you move you ward yourself and you get earth additionally if you do have ice set up for this you also bless yourself the, the bottom is just phenomenal the top is also really strong between turns i just want to say that that if you aren't attacking it's just a really good thing because it gives you a lot of recovery and sometimes you don't want to have too many downturns anyway so being able to just almost bring yourself back to full or potentially back to full is really great glacier slam is hilarious just look at how many hexes you hit with that it's like if get yourself in like in the front part of a room and just hit what seven hexes with it attack three muddle on all the enemies and any enemy that's standing on ice uh you have pierce three on it which is great um god i, I just love that card but also attack move five on bottom all adjacent enemies suffer a damage, so you get a lot there. But if you have ice, you jump five. Gosh, that's such a good card. This is one of the levels that is hard to pick because the I do um, somewhat leads towards Glacier Slam because the bottom is super useful, um, but it's not one that you're going to want to be recovering that often. But uh, Glacier Slam can actually pair really well with, like for example, what I was saying, Frozen Over. Uh, you're going to be piercing a lot of them, especially especially if there are shielded enemies, like there's going to be Burrowing Blades, Glacier Slam. With Frozen Over of Glacier Slam, you're going to delete delete burning bl burrowing blades which is they're super annoying so but any any like shield enemy like flame demons also this would apply to as well uh but thick frost i think is just a little bit easier to use on both sides except for the bottom of glacier slime which is just uh universal uh pick whatever kind of plays your play style um this one also gives you the ability to because you're gonna have a move five you can potentially ditch one of the low moves and uh, get a really powerful top attack Level seven, so Gift of Mana. The top is a little weird because uh, first off, spend any element to strengthen yourself. It's very good. And then until the end of the round, every time you finish a move ability, uh, perform an attack two and target every hex with an enemy adjacent to it that you moved with the move ability. It's it's kind of weird if um you need to set yourself up to where you're gonna be moving. So you need to like either jump through a lot or set up ice to where you're gonna skate around a lot or something so you can like try to get to as many hexes as possible move through a room something and then just do a crap ton of attack twos it's very reminiscent of the the brute's trample which um first off i love but whew yeah the bottom on the other hand though move three great and then uh it's a loss it's a loss guys every time you end your turn heal two so the problem with the bottom of this is it's a loss so you're not only are you playing like the the loss of this for burning a loss but you have to burn one for one with the mountain of course every time you end your turn heal to self and every time you start your turn heal one self due to regenerate this is going to make recovering cards very easy but it does mean that you're giving up your level seven card now and it you're limiting your hand size to six so even though you are recovering cards almost for free every turn because you can you can at least get your stuff back it's um it's just hard to use now i'm sure there's plenty of people who can find the tempo to make sure you're constantly healing to self and uh don't like miss recovery but because the first time you do hit a rest cycle you're going to be down to five or fewer cards no matter what it's just really hard to actually fit that in for a level seven loss um but don't get me wrong it, i'm sure it can be done just a little iffy on it seeing stars so here's a fun I, I and i love this uh, universal here this is this whole seeing stars is something i just lean towards and for this build i'm gonna say just pick seeing stars i'm sure there's other ways to use gift of mana effectively but seeing stars attack five push one muddle and then give whatever element you need even if you need to help an ally out and give them an element you can do it so if your friend needs dark give them dark but chances are you're probably going to be using it to give yourself set up ice or earth whatever you need for your next turn but attack five push one muddle is pretty solid in addition to getting the universal versatility of whatever element you need the bottom half jump three attack three muddle is really good you just jump 
slam it in their face, and then you can set up a top attack there, which is really great. Now it doesn't have any elemental reliance, but uh, as a very good, it's just, it's 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 so strong. I, the card does so much, and I love it. Shattering Blow, hey, it's a loss, so this better be good, but hey, uh, first off, if you have ice, brittle everything next to you, which is great. Then attack six, which is huge, and it's basically gonna be an attack 12, um, because you're gonna hopefully be setting this up to be brittling them. And if you have Earth, it's an attack 8. So if you have Ice and Earth, it's basically an attack 16. It's... when If there are the right things in play, you can just potentially really destroy your rooms with this if you've set your elements up right and the enemies are right. So if, 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 then this is amazing. But it has to be tied to a good bottom. So we have move 3, heal 3, self, which is strong. That's what you want on a top loss. You want a bottom that's universal. Move 3, heal 3 is already good. But then potentially move 3, shield 2, heal 3 is great. But move 3, shield 2, heal 5 is insane. If you can get your elements set up correctly, this can be huge. But even then, move 3, heal 3 is already solid enough that you can lean on this. It's pretty good. Draw strength, on the other hand, is attack 5, attack 5, two separate hexes. Great. Ward self. Uh, so it's kind of hard, but even then, two attack 5s means you're effectively going to be doing a net attack 10 if you can set this up right, which is really strong. Uh, it does have an early initiative, which is usually pretty good for a ward, but probably at this level, you're going to want to use the ward to... Uh, reduce one with the mountain damage. So you're probably going to pair it with a late initiative. But even then, this is a pretty strong card. Two attack fives is nice. A uh, ward, uh, conditional ward. I mean, it's a conditional ward. You're probably not going to get it all the time. So at the bottom, all enemies within range three suffer damage. Huge. Uh, for every enemy that uh, suffered damage, strengthen something within range three. So you can start strengthening yourself, strengthening all your buddies. Uh, that's a lot. And then gives you earth, of course. Whew. And the part I like about the bottom part of this is if you set yourself up correctly, you can use this to give do a little bit of damage to the whole room, give usually your whole team a bunch of strength, and, and then hit them with a, an attack with advantage. But because you did get uh, strength in the middle of a turn, it does mean that for your next turn, for your bottom and top actions, you're going to have also advantage on all those attacks. As cool as Shattering Blow is, and I do like the move 3 heal 3, I do feel like draw strength, I lean a little bit more that way because it's just easier to set up and both actions are universally good instead of the shattering blow which is something you want to hold on to to maybe use the bottom if 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 so uh shattering blow is good don't get me wrong but i lean towards draw strength now level nine bring down the mountain on frozen spread and spike so let's get into it bring down the mountain initiative nine's great which is great you know it's good but uh create three obstacle tiles within range four it was just fun uh then attack two every enemy at least Jason to at least one of those obstacles great if you have earth that means it attack three on them that's that's actually although it does say only attack two you are at level nine so your attack modifier deck's really good crag heart uh rock slide was already considered too powerful so now this is basically rock slide but then it can actually use your attack modifier deck against enemies that have no shield it was still good and that was the thing it was good but now this is attack two or attack three using your modifier deck to potentially boost it to more this is can get really insane not only that but packed onto a nine initiative but the bottom on the other hand is a shield two, retaliate two, potentially retaliate four um infuse earth now, I know that there are some of those um, other initiative cards, but Retaliate 4 is really hard to bitch about. Uh, Shield 2 is something that you can at least use. And now at level 9, of course, it's not going to be as strong, but it's still very good. And it gives you Earth. <sighs> and Bring Down the Mountain also gives you Earth. Gosh, what a great card. I love it. <laughs> Frozen Spike. You'll notice something strange about this card. It has a range on it. Uh, this is your second ranged attack. Uh, so that's a huge amount of area. Attack three and push on it. And then if you have ice, uh, create uh, three icy terrains in there. Uh, so you can attack three on a crap ton of area, uh, push them, and you create ice and potentially create more ice, like icy terrain. That's a lot on one action. And the bottom is a move six. Great. Uh, and then uh, if you have ice, you make an adjacent enemy suffer three damage. Then you recreate ice after. Jeez. So that's the thing is both halves of this called the Frozen Spike consume ice and use ice. And both half of Bring Down the Mountain consume Earth and uh, infuse Earth. Gosh, it's so great. Um, I I do. Um, the th Here's the thing. 
Although I do like, you know, the Retaliate 4 shenanigans. Move 6 and Fuse Ice is just really hard to bitch about. But also if you have Ice, you can just straight up do 3 Suffer damage. And that big chuck of Frozen Spike is just hard to complain about. I know it's only attack 3s, but you'll be able to use your modifier deck. And you'll be able to potentially create Ice, push them away. There's, there's just a lot you can do with this here. And not only that, but you can create Ice on the hexes next to you and move to them. And scoot towards them if you really want. If you want to skate around again. Wayne Gretzky. Anyway, I lean towards Frozen Spike. The perks are good. You want all of them. The end. Thanks, Dwarf. Um, the first thing, and it's really obvious, is to ignore negative item minus one effects. And this is because you have durability issues. You're going to be wanting to use those items, those armor items that give you minus one to your deck. So take that. But also, uh, this, this does say that whenever you enter Icy Terrain, uh, you may ignore the effect and get plus one move. So the cool part about this is um, you can now enter Ice and then you get plus one move. Now, of course, you can just move to the other side and effectively get it, but you can now shift directions and skate around all you, how you want. That's your first perk. So now, of course, it's like, well, uh, I don't want to skate on ice as my first perk. Yeah, but it also gives you the ability to wear heavy armors. Both of those mixed into one. They're going to pick pick that. And last, and of course, immediately after that, you're going to want to remove the minuses. I, I hate... This is one of those cards where you do have, have a lot of like low attack values that can attack multiple enemies. So because of that, negatives are going to be hurting you more than just adding positives. But not only that, but you have like the ability to remove the negative two and replace it with a plus zero, which is fine. But And you do have the standard remove a minus one with a plus one. But you have a remove a minus one and replace it with a plus zero disarm. And that's really strong. It's just super good. So lean on that one first. So here's also another one I want to point out. The replace one plus zero with a rolling shield plus one. Removing the plus zeros is actually good because it does mean that you will get, be getting more of your terminal cards. And once you've removed the negatives, it means that your terminal cards are probably going to be the positives because you can get, you can actually potentially remove almost all your negatives here with the first uh, four perks there. The top, the top four are going to remove uh, four out of six of your negative ones. So you're going to be wanting to take some neutral ones anyway. But because they are rolling modifiers, um, and replacing a zero with a rolling modifier effectively reduces the terminal cards. And shield one isn't great, but plus one damage and shield one for the turn is actually really solid. So that's something I definitely lean on. If you need more self-healing, and you will, uh, do consider taking the rolling heal self. Um, it, that's, that's a really strong one. And... Uh, the uh, pl replace a plus zero with a plus one ice earth is still really good because you do need elements and getting rid of the plus zeros for plus ones is also really strong. Uh, the plus zero with plus two is already great, but then potentially to create an icy hex terrain is actually pretty solid. I, I do generally prefer the zero to the two than to adding a plus three because adding the plus three just makes the deck thicker and replacing a plus zero with a plus two tends to, I think, go a little bit further, especially because you can use the, um, the, the fact that you can get bonus movement from the ice ability um combined with a plus two to just add out, add out. It, it just averages around better i'm sorry I, I do much prefer removing plus zeros than adding things unless adding a plus four if it said add a plus four i'd probably do but adding a plus three is that's good but i i, I lean on the other cards the bottom thing you do have a an oops button like oh crap i took a hit and you can once per scenario say screw it um it's hard to really use two perks for that. The other perks just typically pay off for more to the point where I just don't end up taking that. So for hand building, you're going to obviously take one with the mountain, but you're going to take at least a couple of uh, cards that are low level. If you're level one, you can skip this step because they're all going to be low level. But take a couple of cards that are universal and that are level one so you're going to be able to at least preserve your longevity without hurting yourself too much take a look at the amount of spenders you have and generators get at least a couple of non-loss ice and or earth generators depending on how much you're leaning into one you're going to probably want to bring both because frankly there's just so much on them that you can't just say i'm going to be an ice build like that's cool but it's going to be better if you use both the bottom of encased fist will give you a lot of mileage going at 19 uh several rounds and doing a move forward jump is pretty solid like i'm just putting this out there there's there's a lot of ways you can just say hey get this back and especially if you um need to do certain things two turns in a row like a lot of people like i only have one move four like 
uh, if you need to get through, like there's some, there are some scenarios that are saying, hey, you better start escaping now and get out to the other side. Like I only have one good move. You know what? The, the frozen fist, like, cool. I only have one good move, and you don't have more than one. You have multiple, but you can just keep on getting that card back and uh, abusing it, which is great. But um, you're gonna want to bring at least a couple of those moves, and you still need to have some ice and earth generators. So um, it really depends on how you build the class. But uh, it's actually. The, the level one cards do have just a lot of mileage to them to the point where it's hard to complain about which ones you pick. Now, of course, if you do forget to bring some of the non-loss ice or earth generators, that will screw you over. So bring a couple and then start to rotate. And I know that like, as you level up, there's a lot of the spenders that you get. So I typically rotate out some of the spenders for some of the higher level up cards until you get to some of those uh, generators in the mid levels. I think a lot of people are going to struggle with the mindset of playing the class though, because uh, you immediately feel like you're down to seven cards. Uh, and then when you're like looking, staring down the first rest, the first rest, and you know you're going to be down to six cards by the end of it. So prolonging that first rest is going to be pretty critical. So being able to set up really good first turns to set up your um, elements the right way, to set up your um, everything to where you can recover cards, and being very aware of your positioning. Because, you, you again, Frozen Fist is one of those where if you do <laughs> get out of position, will make you pay dearly. But this is something you can use. You can use some of your strengths to your advantage. For example, there's some times where uh, people will be like, oh no, those snow imps are going to be hitting us with lots of brittle or nasty effects. Now, snow imps a lot of times have really low attacks, but since they brittle you, and you can pair them with some really nasty monsters like that have high attack values. But if you take the hits from the imps instead, so you're going to take a bunch of low attacks, but then when you go... Uh, due to regenerate, the brittle's just going to fall off. So you can just initiative dance, remove the brittle, and just laugh at them. Whereas another person is going to be left brittle and going like, please, someone heal me. You don't need to worry about it. All you have to do to remove brittle is start your turn. And or if you do, see, there's actually a really annoying enemy that, oh, set up correctly, will bane you. Just take the hit for the other people. So there are some hits that are terrifying to some people that are just not terrifying to you. Volunteer to take those because they'll go a long way for the team and then learn that there's some things like attacking, taking a couple attack threes is something that, you know, perhaps the banner spear can do, but probably a low level you shouldn't because you're going to want to recover health and taking like, oh, I, you know, I've got 10 health. I'm good. And then you're like, attack three, attack three. And now I need to suffer two to recover a card. And we're like, oh, I have way over my head right now. I'm about to die. Uh, yeah. So maybe let some of the other people take those hits or maybe learn to position yourself to split them up. It's a very important. So bring yourself enough hand to give yourself sustain. Personally, if you do not have at least uh, four infusing cards, then you're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> Luckily, there's a lot of elemental interaction on the card, so uh, you usually have to be at least semi-deliberate to avoid it, although sometimes you can just say, hey, this card looks cool. Before you do that, be sure you have the nice initiative spread. I know the Frozen Fist definitely lacks a little bit on the early initiatives, but hey, you have to do with what you're, well, you're working with. So I hope this was helpful. So uh, first off, thanks, Doris, for helping me with the guide, and thanks all of you uh, who have gotten this far, So, because I clearly talked for way too long. So are you excited about the Frozen Fist? Uh, I know it's got a very interesting playstyle, very complex melee class. So what do you think of it? Are there any cards that stand out to you? Let us know in the comments below. Um, I want to thank all of our iNext tier patrons. All of you are wonderful people, and uh, we really appreciate your support. If you do want to join the Rage Badger community, we do have a Discord. I'll be putting a link in the description below. If you do want to support our channel or get like early updates, I'll also be able to put a link uh, to the Patreon in the description. So thank all of you patrons. You're amazing, and thanks all of you for watching. Sparta, what are you even playing with? That's a dust ball.